This is one of my favourite Lancashire folk tales. Lady Sybil and the Milk White Doe. Lady Sybil lived in an ancient tower on the high wide moor, hard by the promontory of Eagle's Crag. Lady Sybil possessed charm and grace, beauty and wit. She had many suitors, not least of whom was Lord William of Hapton. Although Lord William showed her unfailing love and devotion, Lady Sybil had no eyes for him. Her love was for the wild moor. Her greatest pleasure was to pace the hills by day and on such a night as this, when the moon was full and high, to stand upon Eagle's Crag, gazing upon her. During her lonely moorland walks, Lady M Sybil felt more and more drawn to become a woman wise in the lore of the land. She studied herbs and potions and tried them upon herself. On such a night as this, when the moon was full and high, she lay in the bracken by Eagle's Crag and gazed upon her until her senses reeled and she became entranced. In her trance she became rabbit and stoat. She became hare and harrier. She became lark and hawk, pigeon, partridge and plover. She became gorse and heather, couch grass and fern, tormentum and wild thyme. But her greatest joy on such a night as this was to become a milk-white doe, a pale streak racing across the high, wide moor or standing upon Eagle's Crag, framed against the moon and calling to her. Thus she learnt the secret lore and language of the earth. Lord William kept watch on her from a distance with grief and longing in his heart and growing anxiety in his guts, fearing she was losing her wits and worse, through her practice of witchcraft she might lose her life at the end of a hangman's rope. As he kept watch, not daring to interfere, there grew in him his, in his anxious mind the idea of rescuing her from herself. Lord William consulted an aged crone who lived in those parts. She was a healer and a wise woman, but she was also feared as a witch by superstitious folk. Set a witch to catch a witch, was Lord William's maxim. He met the crone in her herb garden, harvesting fumitory and thyme. Her face was an ancient, craggy and full of character as the harsh, high moorland landscape in midwinter. Her huge knuckles stood out from her gnarled hands. Her left leg trailed slightly as she walked around her herb garden. When Lord William had told the crone of his fears for Lady Sybil, she invited him into her cottage, which was neat, warm and comfortable. A potion was bubbling on the open range, filling the cottage with delicate aromas of sage and sandalwood. Around the shelves were the crone's herbs of healing, many with animal names. Cat's ears and mouse ear, cowslip and oxlip, chickweed, cuckoo pint and bird's foot trefoil, hogweed and sow thistle, toad flax and wormwood, Harebell, henbit and hawkbit, foxgloves and bats in the belfry. Lord William haggled with the crone for hours, urging her to persuade Lady Sybil to desist from her dangerous pursuit of wisdom. The crone deftly deflected the Lord's cogent arguments, for they disregarded the passion in the lady's 
the threats to the lady's life, the crone treated with disdain for the discounted lady's will and calling, the lord's desperate offers of wealth, the crone rejected with contempt, for they were a slaw, slur upon her own integrity and calling. The crone let the lord exhaust himself of all his arguments, threats and bribes. Then she told him what he must do. On such a night as this, when the moon is full and high, take to the moor with your best hounds. You will start a milk-white doe from cover. Pursue her, but do not kill or harm her. When you have caught her, bind her loosely about her neck with a silken cord and lead her gently to your mammy. Then sleep and leave the rest to me. On such a night as this, when the moon was full and high, Lord William took his hounds to the moor and loosed them. The hounds snuffled in the bracken and gorse until they started from cover a milk-white doe which spread away from them. A pale streak racing across the high, wide moor, leaving the hounds far behind, all save one, which the Lord failed to recognise, a craggy old bitch with a game hind leg, which kept pace with the milk-white doe, pace for pace. With bursting lungs and aching legs, Lord William caught up with the milk-white doe, as she stood by Eagle's Crag, framed against the moon and calling to her. The craggy old bitch held the doe's hind leg gently between her jaws. He threw a silken cord about the doe's neck and led her to his home of Hapton Tower. He felt she was too fair a creature to leave in a stable, so he locked her in a stately tower room hung with fine tapestries. Then he went to his couch. Barely had Lord William sunk into an exhausted sleep after his exertions on the moor, when he was abruptly catched from, cast from couch and slumber as a great storm blew up, battering against his home, and Hapton Tower began to rock on its foundations. Worthy ancestors fell from walls. Fine porcelain toppled and smashed on the tiles. Pots and pans crashed on the kitchen floors. Dressers burst open, scattering family silver. Chained hounds howled with fear and anxiety in their kennels. Struggling out of a tangle of sheets, Lord William made for the tower room where he had left the milk-white doe. Often he was flung against the walls as the building rocked and tilted, or thrown down to grovel amongst the shards and silver, tearing his legs and hands. Bruised and bleeding, he reached the tower room. As he unlocked the door, the shaking and quaking of his home subsided as suddenly as it had begun. The door swung slowly open. Instead of the milk-white doe, there was Lady Sybil, naked and at ease, quietly combing her pale tresses. Soon after, Lady Sybil and Lord Hapton were wed. They had many children. Each day, Lady Sybil walked the high, wide moor, collecting herbs, often with animal names. Her family never ailed, but she had a poultice or a potion to soothe and heal them. And on such a night as this, whenever the moon was full and high, her soul would soar out onto the high, wide moor, where she would lie in the bracken by Eagle's Crag and gaze upon the moon. Entranced, she became the creatures of the moor. Best of all, she became the wilk-white doe, standing at Eagle's Crag, 
framed against the moon and calling to her. So whenever the moon is full and high, if you have the eyes for it, you can see her still, a pale streak racing across the high, wide moor, or standing upon Eagle's Crag, framed against the moon and calling to her. And at her heels, you can see her constant companion, a craggy old bitch with a game hind leg.